Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. This is the world of competitive eating. And these are the people who are dedicating their lives to making it on this growing scene. It's massive at the moment, it's definitely getting bigger. Now it's starting to be seen more as a sport. Snooker is a sport, absolutely competitive as a sport. To us in our world, it's important as it is to someone on Olympic level. They can eat mountains of food in minutes and thousands of calories in a single sitting. Competitive eating has been called one of the world's fastest growing sports. In America, the largest contests offer big money prizes and draw supersized crowds with millions more watching at home. In the UK, there's a growing scene of competitive eaters finding fame and fortune through food. This is Bear Meets Food, and this is the Man V Roast Five Butter Challenge. But what must this be doing to their bodies, and how can they possibly stay healthy? That's going on inside your stomach during a challenge. My current GP said, professionally, I've got to tell you, do not do this. But professionally, I've got to tell a UFC fighter not to do this. Tonight, we follow Britain's number one competitive eater as he chases his dream of breaking America. This is my first year competing against the best of the best in Major League Eating. His arch rival, a record-breaking eating machine, closing in on his title. My game plan is eat fast, win. And the rookie, hungry for a slice of success. Nine minutes, 21 seconds. Among the cream of the UK competitive eating crop is 29-year-old Leah. Hello, hello. Leah is a self-confessed fitness addict. She goes to the gym six times a week. She can deadlift 90 kilograms. And on her days off, she can eat close to 3,000 calories in under a minute. I was known as like the crispy queen for quite a long time. I managed to do the 12 original glazed Krispy Kreme donuts in under a minute. If I crush and take one bite, I'm able to swallow and then take another bite at the same time. I know my way around a Krispy Kreme donut. Leah realised she could apply her technique to a variety of foods. An unlikely speed-eating legend was born. I've done a lot of challenges. I've done a Domino's pizza in under a minute. I've done Terry's chocolate orange, which I set the world record at. That was 65 seconds. It's not just speed. Leah has also eaten eight pounds of chicken wings, 10 pounds of cereal, a 40-ounce burger, and 100 Jaffa cakes in under seven minutes. I went to New York to the Battle of the Big Eaters. <laughs> you might have to bleep this out. I don't know if you can even write that. The misconception is that competitive eaters are these massive human beings and they'll just come in like giants and like thump themselves down on the table and go, like scoff all this food. But then I come rocking up and they're like, yeah, she's not going to do it. And then I go away with a massive T-shirt <laughs> that doesn't fit me. Today, Leah is at Mad O'Rourke's Pie Factory in the Black Country to take on the restaurant's signature challenge. She now has 30,000 YouTube subscribers and over 10,000 followers across other platforms, all hungry to see her next video. What is up, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm at Mad O'Rourke's and I'm going to be taking on their Desperate Dan Cow Pie Challenge. The Desperate Dan Cow Pie is four pounds of steak, kidney and vegetables with a thick pastry lid and two signature pastry horns. This thing is huge. Normal diners get 30 minutes to finish it. Most fail. Leah plans to polish it off in half the time. Time has started. Let's go.
looking back, I could always eat double what my brother could eat. I don't have that thing in me that says, stop eating, you're full. Leah discovered the world of competitive eating when she took on her older brother. He went to a local restaurant and he did a food challenge and failed 10 weeks in a row. And obviously I'm his sister, I'm going to banter him about it. He then said, you come and show me how it's done. So I did. That was pretty much the last time he challenged me to anything. Growing up, Leah always enjoyed food, but struggled with her weight. It was made very clear to me that I wasn't like other girls my age and that I was very much bigger. Kids are mean. They will say exactly what's on their mind. I was made very aware that I was more overweight than a normal girl, anyone else, and then it made me look at myself differently. In her teens, she tried various diets, but was never happy with how she looked. Over the span of about a year, I went from a size 12, 14 to a size 8, 10. I lost about three stone. I'd avoid all cameras, all reflections, all cameras. She found structure and discipline when she took up bodybuilding. When you yo-yo diet, you lose sight of what's important, and it is your health. So bodybuilding kind of changes all of that because your diet matters so much. She now follows a mostly healthy diet, but allows herself what she calls a cheat meal around once a week when she takes on eating challenges. If you look at good, young, competitive eaters now, you have to maintain a good level of fitness. I wouldn't say it's healthy, but I would say once a week you can go for a cheat meal and have a little, I say a little, having a huge burger, and it's not going to kill you. Her goal is to become the UK's undisputed number one competitive eater. But one man stands in her way. Did you run him? Yeah. Can we get a clap? This is the man regarded by many, including himself, as the best in Britain. My name's um, Adam Moran, uh, also known as Beard Meets Food, and uh, I'm the UK's best competitive eater. This is Beard Meets Food, and this is the ultimate Chinese munch box challenge. It's fun to say that I'm the best at something in my country, so it's like being Harry Kane or something, you know, as a footballer. I might not be as good as Cristiano Ronaldo, but best in England, right? Adam can eat 10 pounds of food in under an hour, the weight of a six-foot aluminium stepladder. That's kind of what I'm known for, I think, these huge eating stunts, I would say. Those kind of videos where you're ordering an entire menu, they're relatable to people. <sighs> as well as the takeaway challenges, Adam has eaten his way through dozens of UK restaurant contests. Don't fly, bud. On the mark, get set, go! After winning the Yorkshire Pudding Eating World Championships, Adam decided to give up his job in stockbroking to focus on the food full time. Nobody beats the beard. Not on these shores, anyways. Now he's on the verge of achieving something no other UK eater has ever managed. While the scene is growing in the UK, in the US it's on another scale altogether. This year, Adam competed in his first major league eating tournament, the Potato Croquette Eating Championships in Miami, Florida. Doing that and being the first British person to, to actually place in the top four and beat some, some established American competitive eaters, that was a real achievement for me. I'm really proud of that. Adam ate 101 ham croquettes in Miami, over eight pounds of food, in eight minutes. 10 minutes, all you can eat. Um, nobody can beat me at that in England. So to go out there and, and beat real journeymen pros, is uh, that, that's a lot of fun to me. And that's something that really motivates me to keep going. Adam and Leah are sitting pretty at the top of the British eating scene. But hot on their heels is a new kid on the block. So I can eat about 17 pounds which is like the equivalent of, what, two newborn babies? 20-year-old Kyle Gibson is hungry for recognition. I would say I'm sort of a rookie at the moment. Like, I could definitely give some of the professionals a run for the money. No one's really heard of me, but I can definitely put some of the food away that some of the like, bigger guys can. So you're known in the North East, are you? Yeah, definitely. I've been in the Sunderland Echo, and people have kind of said, oh, is that the guy that eats? Kyle may be young, but he already has a few titles to his name. 
Northern Ireland's biggest pizza. I hold the record for that. The Belly Buster at Man Vs Food in London. I hold the record for that as well. Oh. There is a um, giant breakfast challenge near Leicester called the Hibernator Breakfast. I'm currently the record holder for that, and that's actually named after me. That's the Kyle Gibson uh, Hibernator Breakfast Challenge, which is really cool, obviously. I couldn't do it, put it that way. <laughs> I couldn't eat the amount that he eats. Definitely not, but I think it's something definitely different. It's giving him a, 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 a passion. It is mind-blowing how he gets it down so quick. Oh, he's definitely got the potential to, to make it to the top and be one of the UK's best competitivity, if not the best. Kyle sees every contest as a step closer to the big leagues. How's it going, Addy? How you, Paddy? How's it going? Today, he's filming a challenge set by his local dessert shop. 11 Belgian waffles and toppings at a total of more than 6,000 calories, three days' worth on one plate. A lot of calories, a lot of food for you to finish. And here we have it. Nice. Three, two, one. You do have to obviously really watch what you eat. You can't just do a challenge and then go to McDonald's the next day. There has to be sort of days in between where you are eating healthy, you are exercising regularly. If you're doing it all the time, that's when I would say it's becoming a problem. Nine minutes, 21 seconds. Mate, unreal, I can't even believe it. Like, I'm not even exaggerating with you when I say that people come into the shop eat that one waffle and they have to take half food away because they cannot finish it. And there, 11 waffles, nine minutes, unbelievable. Right, how do you really feel, Kyle? Generally, I'm pretty good. I could honestly do a burger right now. Come on. No, honestly, I could go for a burger, 100%. Kyle's food hero is a familiar face. When you think of competitive eating and professional eating, you kind of think beard meets food. And that's kind of who I do inspire to be one day. Beard Meads Food, obviously, is number one, and I don't think he wants to be knocked off number one. I could definitely give him a good run for his money. I think that definitely he would see me as a rival. Have you heard of Kyle versus Food? Have you got a picture of him or anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know he is. Kyle versus Food was not like... Oh, come on, man. You've got to come up with a better name than that. What do you think, then? I don't feel any threat at all. I mean, you know, between you and me, I don't want to sound overly confident or cock or anything like that, but when it comes to eating, it's my thing, right? So. It doesn't matter how good somebody gets, I'll still be better. In Leeds, Britain's best competitive eater is preparing for a major international contest. He's come to his local fish market ahead of the Oyster Eating World Championships in New Orleans. Hi, so I understand you're Cliff. Yep, that's me. And I'm told that you've got some oysters for me. I certainly am. Today, Adam will be eating just a fraction of the oysters he hopes to consume in the contest to give him a flavour of what to expect. I'm going to try and figure out how best to get them actually out of the shell. The Oyster Eating World Championships, held in Louisiana every year, are a key event in the Major League Eating calendar. Essentially, you have eight minutes to uh, eat as many oysters as possible. There are some uh, specific rules, like you can't eat them as you normally would with, with your hand out of the shell. You have to use a cocktail fork. The all-time record in New Orleans is 47 dozen, or 564 oysters in eight minutes. More than one oyster every second. If I can do these in a minute, okay. like 36 oysters in a minute, that means I'll be on half-decent pace right. to, to place top three. If I don't do these in a minute, I'm cancelling the flight. Three, two, one, go. It's a technique food which is something that I, I normally would avoid because it can be fiddly. If I can build up some kind of rhythm, I should do well. This is my first year competing against the best of the best in, uh, in Major League Eating. Time wheel, 30 seconds. Done it, under a minute, brilliant. I'm ready, as I'll ever be, I think. I'm trying to approach the, the contest as level-headedly as I can, you know, stay calm and hope to come in the top three, because that'll be the, the money places. Salute. Extreme eating isn't for everyone. To succeed at the top level, 
Adam is aware he needs to monitor his health. First time I saw my current GP, he said, professionally, I've got to tell you, do not do this. But professionally, I've got to tell ultra marathon runners not to do this. Professionally, I have to tell a UFC fighter not to do this. So if it were ever to get to the point that he said, you know, if you keep going like this, you're going to have a heart attack, I'd just, you know, I'd stop. Our relationship with food is psychological as well as physical. So I do concede that if you're not highly mentally disciplined, it would be incredibly easy for somebody to get carried away and develop eating disorders. But as long as I'm, I'm healthy, and I feel healthy, I'll keep going. Adam reckons he has what it takes to go far in this world. When he gave up his job in the city to focus on eating full time, his parents were initially skeptical. He's still trying to do them proud. My, my dad sadly passed away recently, actually, but um, when I was a kid, my, my, I, I would play football. My dad never said a kind word to me, right? He always just wanted me to, to be good, and he, he, I could never do anything that was enough for him. But um, even though it was something he wouldn't want me to do, if, um, if I make it on ESPN one day and I'm, I'm in Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest, I can imagine if he was still here, he would be, he'd be just made up. He wanted me to be a sportsman when I was a kid. Maybe not that kind of sportsman, but one of the family made it onto ESPN, you know, doing something that some people call a sport, so, um, yeah. While Adam focuses on the big leagues, there are those closer to home with eyes on his throne. This is Bear Meats Food, and this is the Man V Roast Five Butty Challenge. Recently, Adam took on a challenge at a local carvery to eat five large sandwiches in under 30 minutes. Well, it's delicious, mate. He finished it in under 12 minutes and earned a place on their wall of fame. Oh, Bear Meats Food came in and did the competition. He was our fastest time, and then we met Carl Gibson. <laughs> Kyle took on the entire sandwich menu, halving Adam's time over five butties, then eating six more sandwiches before having dessert. Now he's back to eat their entire menu. I'm going to be eating 11 butties, uh, a roast dinner, a full English breakfast, and then two desserts. It's one of Kyle's biggest challenges yet. An English breakfast with fried eggs and all the trimmings, roast turkey with roast potatoes and vegetables, then 11 oversized sandwiches filled with roast meats, cheese and veg, followed by two hot desserts with custard. It's a normal meal. It's not normal, though, is it? <laughs> Nothing I do is normal. This meal is an estimated 10,000 calories the equivalent of 33 cheeseburgers, or 44 Mars bars, or more than 70 cans of Coke. Wow, they look amazing. Kyle is hoping to complete it in half an hour, but just finishing it would put him on the wall of legends. All right, so I'm back at the legendary Man V Roast in Leeds. I've gone for their entire menu. Hoping for 30 minutes, but we'll see what happens. Time has started. Let's go. Starting with the full English breakfast. <laughs> Kyle clears the full English in two minutes. Breakfast down. Now for the roast dinner. Four minutes in and the roast dinner is gone. In the restaurant where the UK's number one competitive eater ate five sandwiches, Kyle is going all out. I'm quite a competitive person. I don't like losing. If I'm going to do a challenge, I'm going to make sure I do a challenge. That's the dinner done. Now for the sandwiches. As he starts in on the sandwiches, Kyle is in his element. Vegetarian sausage. <sighs> oh. Oh. Yes. Definitely a goal to be UK's number one. I would say I'm sort of a rookie at the moment. Like, I could definitely give some of the professionals a run for the money. Egg sandwich. Whether I could beat them or not is it's a different story. Full and loose breakfast one. Whoa. To the astonishment of the cafe's regulars. We've got beef. 
Kyle shows no signs of slowing down. Chewy. Touch me. Vamen Mund. It's going to take a lot of effort to become the best, but I'm willing to put in the time and effort that it would take to, to become the best. But with half the sandwiches gone, Kyle begins to flag and gag. As soon as I started getting into the sandwiches, I knew it was going to start to get difficult. It got to a point where I, just, I couldn't swallow it. It was just so dense with meat, it just didn't want to go down. But he digs deep and makes it across the line in just over 40 minutes. 43 minutes, 59 seconds. That was a lot harder than it looked. I'm going to get my photo put on the wall of fame, right next to uh, Adam, on the, on the wall of legends. One day I would definitely like to kind of be above him on that, on that wall, but for right now I think I'm, I'm sort of beside him. Growing up in the northeast, Kyle always loved his food. When I was growing up, I always struggled with my weight. You know, I was always really... I was known as that kind of chubby kid. There were certain bullying moments in my life that I can remember. People would always kick on the chubby kid, uh, you know, name calling. But it's something that you kind of just, you don't really think about when you're that overweight. I think you kind of eat almost to make yourself feel better. By his early teens, Kyle's weight was seriously affecting his health. It got to the point where I was so kind of big and overweight at the age of 14, and um, I had a really bad leg injury where basically my knees basically give in. And from that day, that's when the kind of weight loss mentality started coming in. Kyle now follows a careful exercise and diet regime for most of the week around his competitive eating. For me, I do a big challenge. I don't think I'll try and make myself sick. I'll just get back to a good diet, drink plenty of water and, you know, just get back to normal. But while Kyle is still trying to rise up the ranks, there is a personal rivalry at the very top of the British eating scene. On all my social media pages, it says the UK's number one competitive eater. Are you conscious that if the UK scene gets bigger, there will be people that threaten your number one crown? Between you and me, no, no. Nobody could match my determination to get to the level I need to be to win every contest. I, I wouldn't lose to anyone, unless I was complacent, you know, something like that, but um, right now it's not really an issue. <laughs> I want him to sit there and say that I'm the best post Vita because I want people to then go, but what about Leah Schuttkeever? <laughs> Leah and Adam would finally go head-to-head -head in a major US competition at the World Hamburger Eating Championship. Crabtree Valley Mall! Let me hear some noise! The world's best eaters compete at Highway 55 in North Carolina in a first-past-the-post contest to eat a 55-ounce cheeseburger containing over 5,000 calories. Highway 55 is the all-pro eating circus hallmark event, right? It's the biggest event they do, biggest prize money, biggest crowd. The first year I went there, I remember seeing, like, my, uh, my picture up on this big screen and the people coming out to meet me and stuff. You know, I'm just a lad from Leeds. But this year, there is another Brit walking into the arena. High Road 55 was the most terrifying thing I think I've ever done. Nobody knew who I was. Everyone was like, who's this girl? It was intimidating to start with. You've got a presenter, there's cameras, there's everything that I find most terrifying in the world was in that place at that time. And I just thought... <laughs> with two Brits on the lineup for the first time ever, it is a big day for UK competitive eating. I imagine it's very similar to what, you know, Team GB feels like going out to the Olympics. It feels like you're playing for England or something like that, you know, a little bit. Even though you know in the back of your mind it's, it's not football, you know, it's not a spot that tons of people follow. But there's certainly a sense of national accomplishment, I think, in it. To us, in our world, it's important as it is to someone on Olympic level. Like, I feel like you're doing something for your country. Adam and I were there to represent where we're from and we're the only people that can do that. And, yeah, it meant a lot, a lot. But this is not a team event. It's the first time Adam and Leah are going head-to-head -head in an all-pro eating competition. The rivalry is fierce, 
the tension is high, and with the UK's number one eater spot up for grabs, the stakes could not be higher. They announced at the start, we've got two people from the UK. Whoever wins gets crowned UK's number one. I had Adam next to me, and I felt like I had to beat him. Uh, that was it. That was all that's going through my mind. I have to beat him. I have to. It was very intense for me. If you could taste nerves, that's all I could taste. I wasn't nervous, but I knew that there's a good chance Blake could well beat me. People just eating all out. So it's into the hands of a speed eater, right? Next to Lee, it had some apprehension. I messed up at the beginning. I settled into it after about, I think, 20, 20 seconds. And a minute in, I'm looking across and thinking, I've got Lee at beat here, all ends up. If you watch the video, you will see the point where we were neck, like, we were head to head. I wasn't hitting the water hard enough, and she, she was gaining on me and gaining on me, and over the next 20 seconds, I thought she just got me in. Everything that I had left in me was, like, at that moment, released. <laughs> like, endorphins, everything. I was just, I was just absolutely high on adrenaline, and I, I was shaking. I was shaking so hard, and I just thought, no, I'm, I can't lose, I can't. <laughs> There's absolutely no way, no way. As US champion Molly Schuyler sets a new record time of 1 minute 25, there's another contest taking place entirely. I just tried to stick to the rules, I tried to stick to what I knew, and you'll see at the end of that reel, when I stand up, that is like crunch time. Adam and Leah are neck and neck in the Battle of Britain. It was a lot riding on that. It was an, a phenomenal experience. It was a big thing in the contest, and at the end of it, they kind of announced it separately to all the others. And it's a time of what, two minutes and 43 seconds. Two UK's number one. It was a bit of a, a tough pill to swallow for Adam. I wasn't, you know, peeved or anything like that. At the time, I, you know, I shook her hand and gave her a pat on the back and stuff like that. I think you got a great beard, but she's prettier too. <laughs> when you come with this big bravado, people are going to want to put you in your place. I also had that thing in me where I just wanted so badly to win, just to put him like there. <laughs> But with more podium finishes in major contests overall, Adam still technically holds on to the British number one spot. There are no metrics you can use to say somebody else is better than me. Even if they beat me in one contest, Joey Chestnut gets beat in contests all the time. He's still the best in the world. We have our strengths, and I would be doing him an injustice as well as myself if I was to say that I was the best, even though I have been crowned UK's number one this one time. Remember, Adam. The world of competitive eating is bigger than ever. In the US, the annual Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest in New York draws crowds of around 35,000 people, with a million more watching on television. In Britain, eating contests are on the rise. It's estimated there are now 2,500 challenges across the country. It's not an entirely new phenomenon here, but it has changed a bit over the years. Peter Dowdswell is an eater from the British old school. This is me. I'm a true Cockney, and I don't care what people think of me. I've been called a lovable lunatic for what I do. Other people call me a 
an arsehole. It's, they got different names. In his early 20s, Peter discovered a remarkable talent. When you eat and drink, you've got two gullets, one for fluid, one for eating. I can just pick it over and one side for food, one side of drinking. I'm just a medical freak. I hold the world record for eating pancakes. I've done a three-course meal in 45 seconds. I've done 144 brooms. And that's with the stones. To show what hour I mean, could you pass me them? I'll give you a little quick demonstration. To me, that is eating fast and that is clean. Peter's generation of gentlemen eaters ate fast and clean, but he can't say the same about the new batch. When you see the new competitors coming up, I think it's disgusting because they have food all down them and everything like that. I've always been a respectable eater. The way a lot of these people do their speed eating, they're not eating, they're frying it all over the bloody place. In Birmingham, Leah has her sights set on a world record. Today, I'm going to be attempting the Guinness World Record for the fastest time to eat a burrito. The record to beat is 50 seconds. Leah Shutkiva, current holder of the fastest time to eat a chocolate orange, is today aiming to achieve her second Guinness World Records title by eating a 1.3 pound burrito in under 50 seconds. OK, so we're going to measure the burrito first. Guinness World Records rules are strict. The burrito must measure at least 12 inches in diameter and contain rice, beans, meat, cheese, sour cream, guacamole and salsa. It must weigh in at over 600 grams or 1.3 pounds. 6'11". <laughs> to say that I want it a lot, is a massive understatement. Nervous now, wow. This anxiety makes me feel alive. It does make you feel like you're invincible, but yeah, it's great. It is just eating food, but it's great. The current record sits at 50 seconds, so that today is the time to be, and I'm so ready to get stuck in. <sighs> Fingers crossed we'll smash it today. OK. Are you ready? Are you ready? So ready. Sure. Yeah. You ready? Wait. <sighs> Over 80% of everything to do with competitive eating is psychological. I breathe very deep breaths. I see the win. I see the finish line. And then I'll just go, <sighs> OK, I'm ready. Go! When I do a food challenge, my brain is mush. I don't smell, I don't taste, I don't hear anybody from the sidelines. If I had people watching, I have no idea what they're saying. The minute you look, you sense, you smell, you overthink anything, you slow down. It just takes that one minute of sheer pressure, concentration, nothing can us in the head, and then it's over. She's done it. Leah has finished the burrito. But as she comes out of her eating trance, she has no idea if she's done it in time. I'm just waiting for someone to just either smile or cry or something to let me know what happened between point A and point B. What? With, what? What is the time? Looked up and everyone was silent. Dead. Everyone was just looking at me like, you didn't do it. 54. Can't they? Leah has missed out on her target time by four seconds. It was deflating, but it will never deflate me to the point where I would just never get on the bike again. Can we do it again? If you want to go again, we can go again. I think we should go again. I can't allow that to be it. I'm thinking, can I do another one and do it justice, given I've just done one? Bring in the next one. 
three, two, one, go! As much as I don't like to think that I, I take this so seriously, when it comes down to it, I want it so badly. Come on, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. I don't want to be that girl. <laughs> the girl that failed eating a burrito. Yeah, good. Time. 44 seconds. <laughs> We just broke a Guinness World Record. Oh my god. There you go. I'm proud of her. I'm proud of her. Everyone always doubts her, because obviously when you think of competitive eating, you think of, you know, big dudes. And obviously she's not a big dude. So then smashed it. World record holder. Speed eating a burrito is one thing. Eating the entire menu of a carvery is quite another. And there are concerns over the health impact of big food challenges. Following Kyle's entire menu challenge, he's agreed to meet Dr. Helen Lowell. Can I put you on Afro watch, by the way? Because sometimes it will just do this and nobody will tell me. She's been watching his videos with a mixture of fascination and concern. It's a slim chap, isn't he? And that massive plate of food. This is the ultimate steak challenge. There's no time limit on it. So, best of luck. I just cannot imagine anyone physically being able to consume that amount of meat without vomiting, at least. Hello, Hi, you must nice be Kyle. Come on in. Go. Good to meet you. She's keen to ask him questions, and Kyle is keen for any advice she can give. So the meal this morning was over 10,000 calories, yeah. and normally that would be more than four days' worth of food for a normal adult male yeah. to eat. How do you balance that out so that you don't gain weight? Because you're a slim guy. So typically, the day after a challenge, I will lower what I eat. So I'll maybe have, say, 2,000 calories the day after. I've got a really active lifestyle, and I kind of need the calories to just to fuel me through my day. I'm in the gym seven days a week, mainly just lifting weights. That's strength. Seven days seven a week? Seven days a week. Even though you feel healthy and you look healthy, yeah. I guess you've got to ask yourself, you know, what's going on inside? And it, it could be that you're putting yourself at risk of dangerous fat that does increase your risk of diabetes and heart disease. Oh, God. On a normal day of eating, do you ever feel full? That's one problem with me, is I don't really get ever satisfied by a normal meal. So, actually, it really depends on your willpower... Yeah, yeah, you've got ability to, have a very to say, I'm going to stop eating now. Essentially, yeah. The concern would be, over time, maybe if you lose the willpower, your lifestyle changes or you yeah. get a different job, that you're unable to hold back and you end up developing almost like a chronic binge eating and yeah. overeating disorder. They have a really, really good, good willpower. Obviously, I've been overweight in the past, so then I've had the willpower to kind of lose the weight. So I think for me to kind of really lose control, it would take, like, a, a, a lot to do. One of Helen's main concerns is the sheer impact of such volumes of food on Kyle's stomach. Right. What I'd like to demonstrate to you is the normal capacity of a human stomach. So we've got 1.5 litres of sloppy porridge, which is around the amount that a normal stomach can expand. Yeah. Oh, that looks pretty that gross, nice. doesn't it? So there we have it. And actually, that feels like quite a, a large volume, doesn't it? Yeah. So you're having, what, five, six times as much as this yeah. in, a, in a challenge? It's not more, yeah. Shall we have a look what happens when you're really pushing the boundaries? Now ready for surgery. This represents the amount that you would consume in one of your challenges. Wow. The weight of that. It's almost impossible to hold it with one hand. You've still wow. got more to go. Give me a hand with this, Kyle. That is ridiculous. Yeah. To imagine that's that insane. that's going on inside your stomach during a challenge. Yeah, that's mad. You can see now why I had I had some concerns about Absolutely, this and, yeah. and the stress that you're putting your body under. That's crazy. And if you imagine how much your abdomen expands to compensate for this. Obviously, I feel bloated after a challenge, but that's just... That's insane. It feels like it's going to blow It literally minute. does feel like it's going to burst. And that's what we mean by gastric perforation. Yeah. We mean the stomach physically oh. bursting. And you can imagine that would have devastating effects yeah. inside if that were to happen. After his session with the doctor, Kyle has decided to get regular blood tests. 
But as for the eating, her warnings have not dissuaded him one bit. To be the best at anything, you've got to be prepared to put yourself through a lot. Most athletes have to take certain risks to get to where they are. And it's the same with, you know, doing food challenges. In London, at a restaurant specialising in giant food challenges, the stage is set for an epic showdown. Kyle is finally going head to head with one of his heroes. Leah is one of the best eaters in Britain. She's known as the speed queen, where I've kind of got a really big stomach. I can fit a lot in over a longer period of time. I've seen loads of her videos and she's honestly an animal. She's an absolute beast. My game plan is eat fast, win. For Leah, Kyle is an unknown quantity. I hadn't really heard much of Kyle before. He could completely come out of the blue, underdog it and just completely take it. I think it's going to be a combination of speed and capacity, so it's going to be a good test for both of us, I think. One eater can't make it to this contest. The beard is missed, but not forgotten. Would you go up against him again? 100%. Would you? Any arena, any. <laughs> The challenge we have invited Leah and Kyle to take part in is a restaurant favourite. Pizza long hot dog, nine frank fried sausages, whole load of cheese, two kg of beef chilli, um, jalapenos and chopped onions as well on top. I haven't even put the toppings on yet, but wait until you wait for that, you're going to be shot. Kyle has a sneaky advantage. He's completed the challenge before with a time of 20 minutes, well within the allowed half hour, but 10 minutes short of the all-time record of nine minutes and 20 seconds. Most people don't even finish. I would say more fail than pass. Out of 10, I would say three or four would do it. Staff member Dean has seen dozens of people take on the challenge, but never tried it himself. Tonight, he will take on the pros. As a ordinary person, never done a like eating challenge. I volunteered today to take down these guys. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy you. Go for it, go for it mate, go for it. I really You're gonna, gonna destroy it, yeah? You're finished, bro. You sure about that? You're done. Dear Kyle, after today, I'm gonna prove to the world that ordinary people can destroy competitive eaters. As a crowd gathers, Leah and Kyle get in the zone. attempting our meter-long hot dog challenges. Each contender will have half an hour to take down the meter-long hot dog. So, guys, do we think they can do it? Yeah. Five, four, three, two, has a strategy and she sticks to it. Divide and conquer. It's a metre long hot dog. If I break it down into four, take it periodically and just smash through each stage. Kyle has less of a strategy, but no less enthusiasm. He goes hell for leather. It's going to get quite gross. I'm going to be using my hands quite a lot. A lot of water to help get it down. Dean gives it everything he's got. At the beginning, the first few mouthfuls, I was like, yeah, I've got this, easy peasy. But after two minutes, I was like, oh, <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> Dean taps out early, and the head-to-head -head is on. The champion against the rookie. Leah finishes in six minutes, obliterating the all-time record. Six minutes! Keep going, With her plate clear, Leah joins Team Kyle.
Damn. Oh, you're back. Really I, I thought you had me. <laughs> the whole way, I thought you had me. Jesus. <laughs> you're generally emotional. I am emotional. It feels amazing. It always feels amazing. The apprehension before puts you into a little hole, <laughs> and then when you do it and you win, it's the best feeling. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I was blown away. The hot dog looked like the size of her. Like, yeah. She was amazing. <laughs> Kyle finished in nine minutes. His defeat has just put more fire in his belly. It's really given me the kind of understanding of what it's like to go up against a professional and what it would be like going like to some of the big competitions and being up against some of the best. This is absolutely mental. <laughs> Took third place. I got my first plaque. Woo! I got medal, so better than last time fourth place, so I'm happy. <laughs> so exciting. We would like to congratulate you on your record-breaking achievement. You are officially amazing. Oh, my God. This year, I'm going to be taking on the Yorkshire Pudding Eating Championships 2019, hopefully to become the new king of the Yorkshire Pudding. Bravo, bravo, bravissimo, a bravo figaro, bravo, bravissimo, a te fortuna, a te fortuna, a te fortuna, non me gherà, la 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 la